Today we're going to look at the book of Amos. Um, what I want to do today is look at some correlations or maybe some connections that we can make any sign of re resemblance of the day of the Lord found in Amos um, concerning the rise of the Assyrian Empire and how we could connect it to the day of the Lord in the New Testament um, concerning the end of the age and the coming of the new age. Um, so I think the language um, that is used is pretty consistent in the Bible. Um, and we're going to try to find it elsewhere as well, which shouldn't be hard to do. Um, but right now we're just going to focus on Amos. And in Amos, uh, he's warning them about the coming judgment and the day of the Lord that is going to fall upon them when the Assyrian Empire would come and rain destruction on them. So Amos 2.16, we have the most courageous men of might shall flee naked in that day. I mean, this is this is a common thing when it comes to war. People lose wars and not only do they see their countrymen and family dying around them, they usually have to flee with absolutely nothing. And, and they're either fleeing naked or they're being taken into captivity naked, which is you know, ex extremely shameful and it's just debilitating. Just, you know, <laughs> just imagining that could, could really make you feel sick. But this is what's going to happen to the people who are against God when that coming day of the Lord happens. And Amos is warning them. And we see similar things like that in Revelation. Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So we have that nakedness. Um, when the day of the Lord happens in Amos, and we also have it when the day of the Lord happens in Revelation. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I mean, we can go further and even look at Daniel when he speaks of uh, resurrecting into everlasting life or re uh, resurrecting it uh, to shame and, and contempt. And... You can see here, this is not only a language used concerning the day of the Lord, but resurrection as well. Um, garments and holy garments, having your holy garments would mean that you're being resurrected to everlasting life. And, you know, being naked and, and, sh and ashamed would be you resurrecting to uh, shame and contempt. So we have the correlation there that's one we have another one speaking about a trumpet being blown in the city and calamity in amos 3 6 to 8 and it's god taking the uh the responsibility of these calamities happening to the people um so this should this should draw you to revelation 8 if you haven't already read it go and read the trumpets being blown during the day of the Lord and the calamity that comes after each trumpet is being blown. So this is a common theme and um, it was something that that actually happened, you know, historically, whenever there was a war that would that would occur or happen or something bad was happening to to give warning uh, to people, they would blow uh, trumpets or horns um, that happens today. These sirens will go off whenever calamity has struck. So hey, that's another one. Amos 4.1. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, bring wine, let us drink. I really like this one because um, I just thought it was so powerful when I when I hear Jesus um, giving that word warning and he reminds them of the day of the lord that is found in noah's age noah's day um how all of the wicked 
were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. <clears throat> so the wicked, they are oppressing the people, the, the people who are less fortunate than they are. They're crushing them. And they believe, you know, they're not going to pay for anything that they're doing. So they're celebrating. They're saying, let us drink. Let us uh, let us party because nothing's going to happen to us. And right when they do that, right when they least expect it, God comes and he judges them. So that is another um, point of reference, another correlation that we can make. Amos 5, 2, the virgin Israel has fallen. She will rise no more. She lies forsaken on her land, and there is no one to raise her up. You see it in Revelation 18. They're weeping because their great city was made desolate. They said for in one hour she is made desolate. Um... And there's so many things I could say about that. The fact that they said in, in one hour she is made desolate. And um, Paul, Peter, they always speak about the hour. The hour is coming. The hour is at hand. Um, so the city and the, the, the Israel is always being spoken of at, in, in a female sense. Um, feminine right so you have her not being able to rise during the time of Amos and that's also resurrection um, there's no one to raise her up and then in Revelation 18 she she's left desolate no one to raise her up 5 6 to 7 it says seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, with no one to quench it in Bethel. You who turn justice to wormwood, and lay righteousness to rest in the earth. So that word wormwood, it's usually used to describe something bitter. So they've turned justice into bitterness, and they've laid righteousness to rest. Um, when we look at Revelation 18 and 11, it says the name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became wor Wormwood and many, many men died from the water because it was made bitter. So bitterness, um, bitterness is a, a contamination in, in every sense of the word. Um, if you're a bitter human being then you're pretty much contaminated uh, and which will lead to death because you, you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. And then bitterness in the water, the water being made bitter uh, because of uh, wormwood made men die as well. So this is what happens when you turn justice into wormwood and you lay righteousness to rest, which is... Uh, the same ones who are laying righteousness to rest in uh, Revelation, they are the ones who are dying because of it. So we got another one there, Amos 5.18. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, for what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. Acts 2.20, Peter tells them, uh, quotes them uh, scripture saying the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord in Amos darkness is going to come during the day of the Lord and in uh, the New Testament the darkness is also correlated with the day of the Lord. It's in connection with that. So when you get once once you have this knowledge reading it in the Old Testament and how it was applied, then you can go on 
when reading the New Testament and you can understand how this language is being used to describe uh, the destruction of those people. When we go further along into the book, Amos prop prophesies about the future. You know, the coming, the time of the Messiah, that day of the Lord. And he says, on that day, of the, on that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes. Him who sows seed, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the way cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit in them i will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land i have given them says the lord your god so now he's saying that the messiah is going to rebuild their land and bring agriculture back into it they're going to no longer be slaves but they're going to be free and their gardens are going to grow and they're going to be able to eat from them. So this should, this should remind you of what it was like in Genesis. Genesis, they could eat of any tree. Um, their land was uh, flowing with milk and honey, I presume. Right. Or uh, now it's saying sweet wine. So these these are things that are are desired and, and found to be um, good for you. Right. So these are all the things that are going to be given back to them once the Messiah has come and fulfilled his task. And they're going to be planted and never pulled up. Almost also giving you that agriculture type of feel. Because they want you, they want to remind you about the garden. Because this is all about the garden. And with that being said, I would urge you to go on Amazon, look up the circumcision and uncircumcision of Genesis one. Me and my brother Elvin Israel, we put a lot of time, a lot of work into writing this book, and it's a fairly small book easy read and a lot of rich information in it so if you want a soft cover copy you can go on amazon search for it pay for it there if you want it on pdf um, we have it on our on our website you can search our website it's https slash slash the first church dot live and while you're there, take a look at some of our articles and also uh, check out some of our videos, uh, AOSD Chandler on YouTube, um, Resurrection Prophecy Kingdom on YouTube, and SF Wisdom on YouTube. All right, y'all. Peace and blessings.